Alma Bell Wilson was born in 1917 and grew up in Paul's Valley with her twin sister Wilma and parents William and Anna Bell. My grandfather was actually mayor of Paul's Valley and also owned the Abstract Company. So there were some legal ties there early on. I, th I think possibly being the daughter of the mayor you might foreshadow some political aspirations. She and her sister and others in her family, particularly Alma, knew everyone in town. And so she carried that same sense with her wherever she went. After graduating as valedictorian from Paul's Valley High School, Alma Wilson attended college in Illinois. She returned to Oklahoma to finish her undergraduate education. In 1941, she earned her law degree from the University of Oklahoma College of Law, where she was one of only six women in the class. And there was no professional opportunities or careers for uh, ladies at that, at, at that time. And I think what she did cut a path for women to know that, hey, you can accomplish what you set out and seek. When she moved back to Paul's Valley to begin her legal career, only 2.4% of the nation's lawyers were women. Alma married Bill Wilson, a Paul's Valley attorney, in 1948. Their daughter, Leanne, was born three years later. Before mother became a judge, they owned Wilson & Wilson Attorneys at Law. I heard so many discussions when I was young around the dinner table and the breakfast table and because both of my parents absolutely loved the law. I, I mean, they loved each other, but they loved the law more. Alma Wilson stayed home for several years to raise her daughter. Leanne eventually followed in her parents' footsteps, earning a law degree and entering private practice. In the 1960s, she returned to the courtroom with the goal of obtaining a judicial appointment. In 1969, she was appointed special district judge for Garvin and McLean counties. In 1975, Governor David Boren named her district judge for Cleveland County. Of all the applicants, Alma stood out to me. She was a person who knew the law. She wasn't afraid to apply the law with great courage as, as she saw it. She was active in the community, and I, feel, I, I felt very strongly, too, that judges should not only be excellent in the courtroom, have an excellent knowledge of law, but that they should demonstrate in their own lives a real commitment to the total community, raising the quality of life for everyone. In 1982, one year after Sandra Day O'Connor became the first female appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court, Governor George Nye appointed Alma Wilson as the first female to serve on the Oklahoma Supreme Court. With the appointment of Sandra Day O'Connor on the U.S. Supreme Court and the appointment of Justice Wilson on the Oklahoma Supreme Court, which took place within about a year of each other, uh, I think everything changed for women in the judiciary in Oklahoma. Alma Wilson's career made history again 13 years later when she was named the first female Chief Justice of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. I think she was the perfect person to convince the whole bar that it was time, that it was time to go forward with um, women on the bench and on the highest court. She served as Chief Justice from 1995 to 1997. It was really an exciting time because you, it didn't matter that you were female anymore. Alma Wilson died in 1999 after a brief illness, but her remarkable career is not forgotten. Everything was possible. Everything was possible in her life. It, there was never anything that wasn't possible, and that was a message she, she gave to all of us. She had heart, she had grace, she had a zest for life. She played tennis with Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. She was a citizen of the world, and she loved Oklahoma football and Barry Switzer. She was uh, outgoing, engaging, totally confident in her, herself and what she could accomplish. Uh, she was a special lady. I think if you ask her her greatest achievement, she would say it was founding the charter school, which is now called the Justice Alma Wilson Seaworth Academy. The people that she wanted to help were maybe those that couldn't help themselves and the Seaworth gave her the opportunity to do that. She had the youngest spirit right up to the last day of her life. She was enthusiastic about the law. She was curious. She was an intellectual who continued to study the law. And as I say, she had the moral courage to always apply the law as she saw it. But above all, she was just a source of inspiration 
for other people what a legacy she leaves behind her, not only for women, but for all of us. Today, we honor Alma Wilson's leadership and legacy as we induct her into the Order of the Owl Hall of Fame.